Hey guys, so you know how when you're working in your style sheets, especially now, with all the different vendor prefixes, you end up seeing WebKit border radius, Moz border radius, border radius, and then lower, WebKit box shadow, Moz box shadow, box shadow. Doesn't that take up an insane amount of time? And even if you abstract these away to code snippets and you reference those, it still takes a lot of time and it clutters up your style sheets. So if you're smart about it and you use something like less or sass and you create a classes file for these things, you never have to worry about it again. So I wanted to show you kind of my workflow for things like this. So we're gonna build a, a little project from scratch. So I'm gonna use Structure. This is the free app from NetTouch. I'm sure you've heard about it. And we'll call it Project. And I have something pre-created and it's just my template. Now I'm happy to give it to you guys if you want. And what this does is it includes my classes file and stuff like that. Pretty simple, actually. All right, and now because I'm on a Mac, I'm going to use this program less.app, and it'll go ahead and compile your, your less files, and it'll even minify it for you. So if you're on your PC, I'm sure there's something like that as well. So let's go ahead and open this project up, and you can see that we have a blank file, and it links to style.css. But the file we actually edit is going to be style.less. And you can see here that it imports my classes file. And this has everything I need that I would normally type over and over. So you can see we have border radius and box shadow and outline radius, which not many people know about. But then we even have transitions and transforms, the new flexible box model, linear gradients, and even custom things like if I need double borders or even triple borders. So I'll show you how to use a file like this. So let's go into index.html and just to have something to work with, I'll create a div and we'll say hello world. Now I'm going to go into style.less and we can say div, be very generic here. And let's begin by giving it a background of red. And if you've never used less before, uh, go and research it, but you can do things like this color, red. You can create variables and I could say color. And we'll give it a width just really quickly, height, just so we have something to look at on the page. And sure enough, it's picking up that variable color. And this is really nice because if you use it over and over, you only have to change one variable value and it'll affect all of the elements on your page. So let's play with some of these cool classes that we have. Let's say you want to apply rounded corners. Well, normally you'd have to type this on your own, but because we have our class file, we never have to do that again. So we'll go back and we'll say border radius. And I'm going to call this function, quote unquote, and I can either use the defaults which will be about three pixels, or I can pass in something myself, which will say 20 pixels. And now we have that, cool. So we'll bring that back down to say 10 pixels. Now let's say I also need a shadow on this. Okay, well normally you do WebKit box shadow, Moz box shadow, you know the drill. Here we'll just say box shadow, and we'll give it just the defaults for now, and now we have our shadow. And this is, what's nice about this is it already sets up the vendor prefixes. So if you wanna test it, you can always go into your CSS file and it'll minimize it and you see it creates all of that markup for you. That's what less does. So what we're doing here is we're just creating a classes file that we can use with all of our projects. Uh, let's see another one. Uh, let's say you want to transform it. Rather than having to write all of that out yourself, just write transform. Within it, you can just pass in your params. So I can say rotate 30 degrees. And that's done. And that's going to work in Chrome. And that's going to work in Mozilla, as you can see right there. So let's look at just a couple more. Uh, we have the display box for flexible box model. Linear gradient. Okay, let's apply a linear gradient to, say, our body element. So let's go to body, and we'll say linear gradient. And now we can do the defaults, but it's just black to white. So you'd normally want to pass in something on your own. And also a quick note that when you're applying a gradient to the body element, it's not going to look quite right because it's going to repeat. So what you need to do is set a body in HTML and you set the minimum height to 100% and that'll make sure it extends as much as it needs to. So here, let's just override it and we'll say we want it to go just so you can see it, red to green. There you go, or gray to white. And isn't that so much easier than having to write out all of that code? And you can see behind the scenes, this is everything it's writing out for you. So it's doing a fallback color, WebKit, Mozilla, Opera, and the official form. Uh, we can also do things like double borders. So we will get rid of this and we'll say double borders. And the first color I want to be, let's say white, and the next color I want to be six. And we'll go ahead and get rid of these while we're at it and come back. And sure enough, now you can see those double borders have been applied. So if I change that to red, now you can see it. And that uses a mix of borders and 
uh, box shadow technique to, to figure that out. And also you could do triple too if you wanted. You could say triple, yellow. And now you have triple borders, and that's going to work in WebKit, Chrome, you know, Safari, Firefox. So this is how I work, and I highly recommend you do it as well. That way you don't have to repeat yourself over and over and over. So this file is going to shortly be available on GitHub. And if you'd like to fork it and make it better and add some more stuff, please do. Let me know what you think.